Essentially, the title of a talk, The Heist, was taken from a very, very good movie. And I don't know if you guys saw the movie, but it's worth it. This is the 2001 Warner Bros. movie with this title, The Heist, having Gene Hackman in it, and, uh, and also Danny DeVito uh, as, a, as, a, as a chief character. Now, what happens in the movie, you should see it for yourself, but what happens in the movie is that uh, Gene Hackman is doing a small robbery, bank robbery. And his face can be seen on the cameras due to a certain very unfortunate situation. And then he really goes to Danny DeVito, to whom he always gives all the jewelry he has stolen and all the goods. And he wants his part of money and he wants to disappear completely. But Danny DeVito has asked him before to do a much bigger robbery. So he's stealing his money in order to push him for a much bigger heist. And this is what happens. So if you want to really steal a lot, you should first steal from a thief. And then he will do the job for you. That's like the key message here, okay? So what will, be, what will we be stealing? We will be stealing electrons. Now, I am a chemist, and chemists are not obsessed about sanitation, senses, shopping, and so on. They are obsessed about electrons, okay? So now imagine we are here, you know, and and the level to the top of this roof outside is filled with water. And these are free electrons. And now in the real chemical compounds, these electrons fire their homes, their places to live. These could be places like, you know, that second floor, or it could be the first floor, or the ground level here, or the cellar. Now, the the places in the cellar are most comfortable for electrons because they have nowhere else to go. They can sit there, do nothing, and that seems like an extremely boring scenario, but this is what electrons do. They love it. Like, if you come here, you know, uh, on, 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 a, on a certain, you know, working day, where are the students? Do you find them here? No, you find them at the bottom, where they can bowl and throw darts. Now, that's the same what electrons do. They sit at the very bottom. And there are many, many chemical species that have such electrons in their chemical bonds. These electrons and these bonds are very difficult to break and to do something about them. And chemists are just obsessed about doing things to electrons. So they try to find the ways how to do it. Okay? So it's not simple to do. Sometimes it's nearly impossible. Okay. So let's do the following experiment. Please, let's breathe. When I count one, two, three, let's breathe. Okay? One, two, three. Okay. What has happened? Something extremely boring. Why? Because in this very air, there is a small amount of a gas called argon. And this gas is extremely inert. It has this peculiar feature of having electrons at the very bottom of the cellar. And it's so unreactive that it has been in the Earth's atmosphere for millennia. So the argon gas that we have just breathed is literally the same argon gas that dinosaurs were breathing. It didn't do anything to them. It didn't do anything to us. So such cases make chemists very nerved. They want this thing to do something. Chemists are like little, little boys. So we must find ways to activate such systems, such inert systems. And that, that, for this, we need a good thief, a chemical thief. So, uh, as I said, 
When you have those electrons up there, it's very easy to use them. But uh, as the electrons fall on the levels more to the bottom, it's more and more difficult to, to activate them. And also there is a very stubborn and peculiar feature of chemical systems that in order to activate these electrons, there is always an extra price to pay, and that's called activation energy. So sometimes you should use a very powerful thief to overcome this. So the systems that are of interest to me now are very small molecules, such like methane. Now, methane is a molecule that has one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen, and there is nothing special about it, except it's very inert. So people have real problem to activate it. And there are other similar molecules like this, which are called hydrocarbons, aliphatic hydrocarbons, and every one of you guys saw them because you have put gasoline into your car sometimes. And these are the very, very inert systems. So what you can do is you can burn them in your combustion engine and destroy them completely, and that's how you get energy. But this is a really harsh thing to do. We want to do things smart and activate them without destroying them completely. And that's very difficult. So for this, which is of interest for people in the refineries, uh, I will use a peculiar wrapped thief. This thief is called divalent silver. Now, who's this thief? This thief, okay, what about silver? Here you can see a very neat silver coin, 10 zloty coin, minted for the occasion of our university 200th anniversary. Okay? This kind of silver is everywhere around. Okay? Chimpanzee experts care about this, lawyers care about this, and chemists also care about this. But we also have other kinds of silver. We have monovalent silver. Now this is what you learned at school as cations, silver cations. Now these cannot be alone, they always form some chemical compounds. And there is a whitish compound here in the bottle Pretty normal, that's a compound of monovalent silver. From this silver, a single electron has been stolen, but that's not enough. This monovalent silver is not good enough thief. So what we do is we steal one more electron from it, and now we are getting a black powder. That's a compound of divalent silver. Actually, it's very funny because this compound is extremely similar to the compound of divalent copper that people knew already in the times of ancient Egypt. But this black powder has been prepared in our laboratory only six years ago because it was pretty tricky to do it. It's not easy to steal this electron. Now we have learned very good ways how to do it. And let us see what this can do. Now, this is a very difficult slide at the extremes of non-understanding and misunderstanding. So let's go slowly through this. I am first taking this neat white compound of monovalent silver, and I am stealing electron from it. And now I have a robbed thief. Now, he's really crazy. He's doing a very special thing. He steals an electron from my hydrocarbon, from the very hydron carbon, hydrogen carbon bond. And this is his job done. He's of not much interest to us anymore. And then there are certain interesting things occurring because now this molecule is in despair. It has been robbed by a bigger thief. So it tries to do something, and it does something very interesting by producing new molecules. At, at the end of the day, you see, when you sum up these reactions, just like mathematicians do, you will see 
that the net reaction does not have any silver in it. The silver was just an intermediate for us to do a smart robbery. It was needed, but later it left the scene. So this process here could be called by chemists inverse cracking. Now what is cracking? It's just literally what it is. You crack something, you destroy it. This is what the refineries do at very, very high temperatures. But now we have a method to do an inverse process, which is also of interest, at very mild temperatures. Actually, at, at room temperature, this very good thief is doing the job for us. So, uh, I've learned these are the ideas for the world, and I'm very ha happy about it. Uh, the idea of robbing the thief first uh, can be followed. But this very particular application of the idea to the silver compounds has been patented by us. And we are developing this uh, technology now, and uh, we have Orlan uh, with us. So we hope to do something of interest for Polish economy. So I can show you that by doing this, we, we have here carbon and hydrogen atoms. We can generate carbon-carbon bonds here from this bond, carbon-hydrogen bond. So we clearly see that hydrogen disappears, the bond is broken, and the new bond forms. And the beauty of it, it's done at ambient conditions. I could do this reaction here and show you that it works. We do not to use very, very high temperatures. So, what is also in it for Poland? Ideas for the world? Okay. Ideas for Poland? Yes. You see, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, which is a very precise source of information, Poland has the largest resources of silver in the world. We are not the largest producer of silver, because there are many, many resources that are still not being used, but we are potentially the largest producer. And we are not doing that bad, because in fact, uh, because in fact, to generate this robbed thief, we need just some silver ores, sulfuric acid, which is very, very cheap acid. The, it's used in multi-ton amounts in the world. It's everywhere. It can be produced everywhere. And add some electric current. So there are many, many places in the world where we could apply this technology. And uh, actually, also, you should know that KGHM, which is the largest Polish mining company, is second only to a Mexican company in producing silver. So these two are pretty going, you know, head to head in the, in the world contest. So I tried to show you in this, uh, in this talk that we could use a, a thief and rob him and make it feel bad, and then he's doing an extra job for us. So this was an idea for the world, but also an idea for Poland and for the University of Warsaw, where we celebrate our 200th anniversary. And with that, I would like to thank my collaborators. First of all, Professor Hoffman from Cornell University, with whom we started looking at silver two plus divalent silver compounds 15 years ago, to Przemek Malinowski, my excellent student, who was the first to produce certain compound of silver six years ago that we are now using. Uh, Zoran Mazej from Slovenia, my good colleague and friend with whom we do all this research together. Piotr, Dr. Piotr Leszczyński, who is an organic chemist who understands these inert organic molecules very well and who uh, helped us to put silver to work. Adam Budniak, who, is just, who has been just a master student with us, but he did excellent work in, uh, uh, in applying these reactions to organic compounds. And two guys, uh, Piotr Połczyński, my PhD student, and Dr. Jurczakowski, 
from the Faculty of Chemistry, who know how to produce divalent silver using electric current. So with this, uh, I'd like also thanks uh, our uh, grant sources and to you for your attention. Thank you.